has to be respectful. <laughs> sure. Um, I just want to know the reasoning behind not voting yes on the bill. What's your specific have, have any of y'all read those bills? So, okay. Um, you know, the, the, the whole premise behind pushing these bills is to try to get um, teachers a pay raise, more money in the classroom, um, more funding for, for schools in general. Um, and I'm, I'm all for that. I have, I have a wife who is a high school math teacher in Grandfield. I have three children. I have a 16-year-old daughter, an 8-year-old daughter, uh, excuse me, a 12-year-old daughter who will be 13 this next month in April, and an 8-year-old son um, in third grade in elementary school. Um, and I want education funded to a, a very reasonable level. Now, reasonable is in the eyes of the beholder, but we have been in an economic downturn since probably 2008, 2009, and it's been relatively severe. Now, most of y'all were probably born in 2000, 2001. The last time we had a significant downturn in the oil business and, and the largest driving force in the economy in Oklahoma is the energy industry, oil and gas. The last time we had a downturn was back in the 80s, 20 some years before y'all were born. It took us about 20 years to come out of it. <clears throat> really the mid to late 90s, early 2000s, and we were riding high when y'all were between the time you were born and the time y'all started school. But in 2008, Really, the housing bubble, the tech bubble, burst, and not long after, oil and gas went right along with it. And oil was riding at about $120 a barrel, maybe more, and it dropped down to around $30, $28, dollars a barrel, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, right now, I haven't checked lately, but I think we're around $60 a barrel, so it's starting to come back economy is improving, but it's it's a tenuous improvement. Now, they're, they're saying that gas could go even higher coming into the spring. Um, my next door neighbor runs a trucking company, and he was converting a concrete truck into a frac sand truck uh, as I was leaving the house today. That tells me one thing. That tells me that the activity is starting to increase in the oil field. One of the things that slows down an economic recovery significantly is, is a tax increase. And if you, it, one of the things that we're focused on right now is a teacher pay raise because it's been many, many years, probably I want to say maybe 2008, uh, since there has been a significant teacher pay raise. In fact, it was probably even before that because the last teacher pay raise really wasn't a pay raise, it was an agreement for flex benefits to be paid. Now that's a significant thing, but it doesn't go directly into the pockets of teachers. It, it just pays for benefits, which would normally be paid out of your pocket. So you get to keep the money that would go to those health insurance plans, um, but it's not something that you can spend. So that's one of the reasons why that has not gotten a lot of attention. Um, to the point of, of your question, if we give a three, four, five thousand dollar teacher pay raise across the board and then turn around and increase everybody's taxes to the tune of about two or three thousand dollars, what does that do? It, it nullifies about half of that teacher pay raise. So my attitude is there's got to be some other ways that we can come up with a teacher pay raise and at the very least we need to, to do it in a way that doesn't slow down the economic recovery, that doesn't take money out of the pockets of every man, woman, and child in the state of Oklahoma and, and that we pay it with money that is there, that's available, that, that doesn't penalize everyday working citizens. Yeah. So, so to your point, um, my question is twofold. Um, so, this Oklahoma is not the only state that has had teachers uh, uh, threaten to walk out or walk out. 
mm -hmm. uh, such a case. Uh, West Virginia just had teachers uh, that walked out, um, and they had had to pass the they would pass the bill that would give the teachers a five percent increase to their pay because uh, they walked out because the, originally they were receiving a one percent increase in pay and uh, having to pay more for the health insurance. So mm -hmm. they walked out and they had that increase of five percent and they agreed upon that. So what would you? percent pay raise would probably be on, on average would probably be between one and two thousand dollars for, for every teacher which is considerably less than what um, several organizations are asking for um, but that could be done very easily with with a bill that's working its way through the legislative process right now now it started out as the intention was to fund a $5,000 teacher pay raise. It's worked its way down, I think, to about a $1,200 stipend. Um, but coupled with some other measures that can be passed without a 76-vote margin, um, I think a, a very significant pay raise could be, could be done. Um, the problem that we're dealing with with this proposed walkout, aside from the legality or illegality of it, is that now the public employees are wanting to get in on the deal, and they're wanting to jump in and, and walk out as well. Um, and the, the total price tag of all of these proposals is somewhere to the tune of about 1.5 to 1.8 billion dollars. Well, that's over a third of what we allocate in our legislative appropriations, um, and that's virtually impossible. Um, I mean, really, honestly, it's, it's akin to extortion. Um, it's, it's probably not doable, and, and, and you all are, are going to suffer as a result of it, because uh, if it occurs on April the 2nd, there's no telling how long that will last, and it will go into testing periods, um, and a lot of the focus on our, our educational process right now is, is state and national mandated testing. We're already suffering. We're a class size of 30. Our teachers don't have any money to do anything. I mean, we um, personally, I would be a completely AP student, but our school district doesn't have enough money to do that. We have people that have been certified that have no business teaching what they've been teaching. We have teachers that have been having to work at McDonald's and mow lawns just to make ends meet, and it's ridiculous. You're not, our priority should be education, because education is what gets us these better bills, and education is what gets us where we need to be. And the fact that you're telling me that's not a priority is just kind of... Did I say that that was not a priority? That's how you're coming across. Okay. And we're all going to be 18 very soon. A <laughs> lot of people are in this room. We're all going to be 18 by the time this voting rolls around. And I think it's kind of, you need to really take that into consideration. Well, let me, let me go back a little bit in history. In the early to mid-90s, House Bill 1017 was passed by the legislature back then. And at that time, it was the largest tax increase that Oklahoma had experienced in its history since statehood. The people responded, the voters responded, with an initiative petition called State Question 640. They said, we are sick and tired of being sacked with additional taxes to pay for things that the legislature could go in internally and find um, in, in waste and excess and surplus without piling on the taxpayers. And state question 640 mandated that any new tax increase had to be passed with a 75 plus one vote majority by either house of the legislature, or it could be sent on to the voters with a 50% plus one majority. And any significant tax increase, I'm all for a, for a teacher pay raise and increased funding in schools, 
But if it's going to involve a tax increase, now there are some increases that I voted for. I voted for a cigarette tax that would have raised approximately $250 million. That was struck back down by the Supreme Court because we didn't get 76 votes on it. Um, it was originally crafted to be a, a smoking policy or smoking cessation bill, but um, we, we had tried earlier. We couldn't get that passed with 76 votes in the House. It's more like 32 or something votes in the Senate. Um, but that really was a major um, pot of money, if you will, that was struck down, and we, that's why we had to come back in the special session. Now, that didn't pay for a teacher pay raise, because we were just trying to craft the budget. Um, but all of these other packages that, had, that went through special session were mostly just tax, tax increases. Um, and, I, and I actually voted for one of them. Um, but when it came along to the tune of about $750, $800 million, I, I, I said, no, that's, that's not right, it's not fair. Um, it's the easy road rather than going in and doing the hard work of digging in and finding the waste and, and the excess that the government already, already has. Yeah. Um, so what is your solution? Um, because I, I, it's my understanding that almost Well, right now there's a bill, House Bill 3440, that's a, a Commissioners of the Land Office. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with that. Uh, if you grew up in the country, I grew up on school land. Um, one sixteenth of every township, and the township is six miles by six miles, so two sections out of every township are school land. Okay, the proceeds from rent from oil royalties, um, from any type of revenue coming off of those designated land parcels go into the school land trust, okay? From 1907 at statehood until 2007, the school land trust went from a zero balance up to $1.4 billion, 100 years. From 2007 up until this year, 2018, that trust principle has grown from 1.4 billion to 2.4 billion dollars today. And the target is by the uh, by the testimony of the school land commissioner, but by the testimony of the director, uh, Harry Birdwell, is that he wants that up to 2.7 billion another 1.3 billion dollars almost the same growth in 11 or 12 years that they got in 100 years from from the time previous now that's accelerated highly accelerated growth the point of the school land trust is to fund education okay it would only take about 250 million dollars to give every certified teacher in the classroom state of Oklahoma on a $5,000 raise. Now last year I think they appropriate they uh, they allocated about $130 million to schools. The total earnings from the school land trust and all their commercial real estate and, and all the other investments that they have from that trust was about $322 um, million. Okay off of a $2.4 billion um, trust principal. That leaves almost $200 million that just went back to the fund principal. And to me, that's, that's over allocation, that's too much allocation to that fund principal. We can slow that down a little bit, you can just take half of that and put that into a fund for a teacher pay raise and be halfway almost to where you want to be as far as a teacher pay raise goes. There's also another bill that's working its way through the Senate. It was a House bill. I can't really give you the number of it, but it would cap itemized deductions to, I believe, $17,000. And that's projected to bring, if it passes and goes all the way through, that would, is projected to bring in probably another $100 million. 
Now those two things by themselves would give us about a four four thousand, three to four thousand dollar pay increase for every teacher, which I think is very reasonable if we can if we can put it through. Okay. Anybody else? I have a question. Doesn't yes. when you cap the deduction, then you're hurting everybody else too, right? When you cap the deduction, so it's the same it as the tax. tax increase. It sure is. It but sure is. but do we have a, a bill on the the? Because I know committee is closed. The the bill is already passed. No, last that session. one. No, I'm talking about the one for the land. Oh yeah, that's already been through committee. It's already been through yeah, committee, fact, but it hasn't be, been voted on today. It'll be talked about. It probably won't be voted on today, but it's. I take probably one more question. Okay, so I understand that you're not for a tax increase because you believe it will hurt the economy, but I also believe poor education will hurt the economy because people are going to flee the state. I know many teachers have already fled the state. So at what point do you say, yes, raising taxes may hurt the economy, but edu this poor education system is hurting the economy way worse? I'll go ahead and vote for a tax increase because even though I may be against it, I don't think it's the best idea, but we're taking too long to come to a consensus to finally get teachers and education what they right. need. Well, I don't think next year is too long, really. I mean, we've waited quite a long time already. For myself, already. personally, it might be too long. I am 25 years old. I do not want to get stuck in a career that's not going to take me in a place where I can afford to just live. I live with my parents at the moment. Um, and I probably cannot afford to move out. I qualify for low-income housing. Going another year that way isn't realistic, and I'm in a better condition than most, as I do have very supportive parents who aren't looking to kick me out, but some people cannot go past this year. So what happens if, come August, many teachers don't retur return well, and if, education goes down? If so these two and, and other measures that I've talked about run their course, we could have a pay raise this year. Okay. And next year we could finish it with a more significant pay raise. That's that's what I'm what I'm hoping for. I mean, we've gone from a nearly one billion dollar deficit last year to um, about an effective hundred million dollar surplus this year. Now, with some additional obligations, we're probably backwards again, about a hundred million dollars. But by next year. I'm, I'm optimistic and hopeful that the economic picture will change dramatically um, and, and we'll be looking at a whole different situation next year. One of those should be, I would think, the gross production tax, since we are the lowest in all four states around well, us. And, and there is a ballot measure out there right now that would raise the gross production tax to, I believe, 7%. Which is what we were before, which would help mm -hmm. drastically with the deficit we are facing. So, And still be cheaper than any state around us. to be able to be more effective in their job because they're having less time to do all the, uh, to complete all the demands that the job requires, okay? Mm -hmm. sure. And it hurts the students, you know? Sure. Well, I thank you all very much for coming up. I appreciate you all very, very civilly and, and um, respectfully airing all these questions. There, unfortunately, in the legislatures, there, there, there's not any easy answers always. Sometimes there are, um, but right now, there are not. Um, it's, it's really difficult. We've, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, discontent. Uh, anytime money's tight, that's the way it is. It, uh, in, in a marriage, and, and you all will be there before uh, not too distant future, um, one of the most difficult things in a, in a marriage and in a family is managing money. And you 
have to budget and you have to uh, allow for things that you can't afford and you have to say no to things that you can't afford. Um, and it's not easy. It breaks up a lot of families. Um, and there's a lot of friction related to all of this. But um, if we can, um, if we can do the best we can with what we have uh, and, and move in the direction that we can move, um, then I, I think we'll, we'll get somewhere and we'll be able to accomplish some, some satisfactory results. But thank you all again and don't, uh, don't hesitate to, to call, come up here on your, on your own time or on school time or, or whatever because that's, that's what we're here. We call this the, the people's house. Uh, and I am your representative, as, as are all 101 other representatives here. So we, we want to hear from you, um, but, but know that uh, you know, we're, we're like many of you. We, we all have families, and, um, and, and many of us have teachers in the family. I, my, my wife is a teacher. My sister is a teacher. My mother was a teacher. Um, my sister-in-law is a teacher. Um, and I understand where where teachers are coming from, um, but uh, yeah, but it's it's not easy. And uh, but thank y'all very much.